So let's talk about Remote ID and the FAA in the US. And if you're wondering why I'm making this video, well, firstly, just to add my support to the movement of other people doing all of this. Secondly, because anything drone related that happens in one country is like a virus. It spreads out to other country and suddenly it's all the norm. So the FAA in the US is saying that all uh, drone pilots must have a remote ID installed on their craft by, I think, the 23rd of September. General, general lunacy. A, a remote ID basically broadcasts the position of your drone, the position of you, and people with an app can look at it and say, oh, this, this person's flying this drone. Who, what is it? Who is it? And they can, they can go find you and stuff. Law enforcement officers will have even more access to personal data potentially. And the tone of it is like, oh, we're going we're gonna to hold you accountable for your actions. Like all drone pilots are doing bad things. Now, back in the day, uh, it was very well self-regulated. What happened, and I don't like to single out you know particular manufacturers or people we had drones like this this is a dji mavic air it's very good at what it does it's basically a kind of like pushing a camera tripod around you you let the sticks go it stays there you can move the camera up and down it comes back home on its own it's very simple to use people could pick these up from stores they could fly them around instantly and they did and sometimes they flew them in bad places because they were sort of ill-advised about the sort of things that could go wrong. Now, hobbyists like myself and like many of uh, guys watching you would spend a long time building. This is a homemade FPV drone. It's built from scratch. We get all the components, we solder it together. The barrier of entry for this sort of thing is much higher. You have to have some knowledge of the electronics, of the software, how to configure it. Uh, then you have to learn how to fly. It's much more complicated. It won't just sit in the air. It won't come home by itself. If somebody that can fly a DJI drone tried flying one of these without any knowledge, they, they would last less than five seconds if they were lucky before crashing. And because as hobbyist pilots, we knew all about the dangers and what could go wrong, we were very careful about where we fly them. It, generally speaking, we'd like to choose a big old field away from people, away from buildings and cars, because we know that if something goes wrong with one of these things, they generally fall out of the sky and you don't want anybody or anything to be underneath you. Now, unfortunately, the, the use of drones generally and the public's easy access to them has led to a very knee-jerk reaction from agencies. We, we had the, the Heathrow drone incident, which didn't seem to contain a drone, but it resulted in absolute hysteria, people calling for laws. It's uh, media manipulation, and the worst possible kind, uh, basically saying, we need to do something about this. We need to sort out illegal drones. Well, the only way to do this is by registration and stuff like that. This is basically what's happened in the US. The US has decided in order to keep people safe, remote ID should exist. And thus, if someone's doing something bad with a drone, they can be tracked down. And it's the same problem over and over again. If someone's going out intending to do bad things, they won't have remote ID because they don't want to be discovered. So let's say, for example, that someone bad is flying a drone over people, or crowns, um, and then someone good is over in a field somewhere away doing a good thing, flying it properly. Someone looks up on their remote ID thing and says, ah, oh, this person over there is flying badly. Uh, he's the only one in the area, it must be him. Instantly, you've got bad cases of like the wrong people getting punished. And that's generally what happens to these things. The people doing the right things are the one punished. In this case, these are the hobbyists and enthusiasts like myself who are going to be punished by this legislation. I find it quite ironic uh, in the US that they think the big problem in the world is drones and drones are the big thing that needs sorting out. So far in the US and all over the world, we've had no unintentional deaths from a drone. Now I have to use that word unintentional because you've probably noticed Ukraine versus Russia, they're using drones and, and blowing people up with them. So it, in the hobbyist community, nothing's happened. We, we haven't had any instances of people flying into themselves and killing themselves, things falling down and killing people, no deaths, no deaths at all. Now, if we take guns in America, last year, excluding suicides in 2022, they were responsible for 
20,138 deaths. If you include suicides as well, that goes up to 44,000. 44,000 deaths with legally bought guns, or illegally bought guns, in the US versus zero drones. Now, in order to buy a gun in the US, you have to be over 18 and sometimes there's a waiting period and that's about it. They don't make you have a remote ID or even a license. And it sounds like remote ID would be really good because you can have these special like detecting things around school. So when someone goes in and tries to do another mass shooting, they'd be recognized. Uh, again, in 2022, there were 300 mass shootings. 300 mass shootings. This is insanity. And I'm not anti-gun per se, I'm just anti-murder with guns. I think that's a bad thing. I think most people think there's a bad thing. I think the big difference is the gun lobby is very powerful. Uh, they Every time someone suggests gun control, the whole world goes mad and says, this is insane, you're taking away our freedom. And America is, of course, the land of the free. Unless you're talking about healthcare, which is bad. We won't talk about that, that's a whole different subject. But you kind of get my point. They're, they're going for remote ID on little fun quads that we want to fly around in nice quiet areas away from people, yet they're not going after the, the things that can really hurt and kill people. And you're probably thinking, well, that's different because these things fly around. And again, again, in the US, you can build and fly your own ultralight aircraft. You don't need a license. You don't need remote ID or ADSB. Uh, you could just fly it around. Even if you're flying your own airplane, like you've got a Cessna or something, which you need a proper pilot's license for, you still don't need ADSB unless you're going in certain airspace. If you're in class ABC airspace, then you do need an ADSB. So people can see you as a like a beacon on the radar. If you're in the other class of airspace, which is D, G and E, don't need it, don't need it. Yeah, if I was, let's give you a hypothetical situation. I have a property which is like 500 acres. It's massive. It's 100 miles away from anybody or the nearest airport. I own all the land around me. If I stand in the middle of that and I fly my quad one foot off the ground around in a circle, then I would be illegal in the US after September because I'm not giving a broadcast remote ID. Where's the sense in that? There isn't any. And it, people need to look at it and take a hard look and say, this is dumb, we need to rethink this. If we're gonna control stuff, perhaps the killing things rather than the, the fun things to play with. The, the, the other problem is, again, when you restrict these things, these are new sort of technological things, these are very sort of STEM friendly. Kids wanna build these and fly these. That that's kind of gets taken away when you have to do extra special things and jump through all sorts of hoops to do things. A lot of the community will be, this is too hard, we don't wanna do it. If there is a problem with drones and potential of drones are hurting people, it's if we ever get to the stage where Amazon and Google are threatening to do drone delivery, because these will be big, heavy drones flying over uh, urban areas fully populated with people and cars, and that's when you're more likely to get a death, things falling on people. But of course, big companies equal big money, and they don't have to go through the same sort of crap that we as hobbyist pilots do. So anyway, that is it. Say no to remote ID. It's a bad thing. It won't work. It won't keep bad operators away. And it's just crap. So don't do it. FAA, take note. Well, you've made it to the end of the video. So thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.